Welcome to a mini trading tutorial from OptionsAtoZ.com, the website dedicated to teaching investors the art and science of options trading. In this video, we're going to talk about exercising options and show you how to submit exercise instructions in Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim is the option industry's most powerful software. It's available absolutely free just for opening an account. You can trade options, stocks, futures, commodities, and even currencies all under the same account number. For more information, please visit www.thinkorswim.com. Exercising options in Thinkorswim is very easy. However, before I show you how to do that, let's understand what it means to exercise an option, as well as some points to consider before you submit exercise instructions. Most of you know there are two types of options, calls and puts. If you buy a call option, you have the right to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock for a fixed price. If you buy a put, you have the right to sell 100 shares of stock for a fixed price. Remember, option buyers have rights. They are never required to buy or sell the actual shares of stock. However, if you wish to buy or sell the shares, you must submit exercise instructions to your broker. For example, if you own a Microsoft $25 call and exercise it, you will buy 100 shares of Microsoft and pay $25 per share. If you buy a Microsoft $25 put and exercise it, you will sell 100 shares of Microsoft and receive $25 per share in cash. While there are two types of options, calls and puts, there are two styles of options, American and European. If you buy an American style option, you can exercise it at any time. However, if you buy a European style option, you can exercise it only at expiration. All equity options, that is options on stocks, are American style, and that means they can be exercised at any time during the option's life. However, just because you are allowed to exercise equity options at any time, is it ever in your best interest to do so? In other words, if the last trading day is usually the third Friday of the expiration month, would it ever make sense to exercise it sometime prior to that? The answer depends on whether you're considering exercising a call or a put, so let's take a look at each. For call options, the decision to exercise early depends solely on whether or not the stock is about to pay a dividend. So let's start with the easiest case. If the underlying stock pays no dividends, do not exercise your call option early. It is never in your best interest to exercise a call early if there are no dividends involved. The reason is that the profit and loss diagram for a long call looks like this hockey stick shaped profile. You can see that you have unlimited profit potential if the stock price rises, but you have limited losses if the stock price falls. However, if you exercise your call, you give up your call option to take delivery of the stock, and that means you lose this limited downside protection. Your profit and loss profile will change from this shape to this. It is now a straight line which shows that you still make unlimited profit potential if the stock rises just as you did with your long call. However, unlike the long call, you are now exposed to unlimited losses if the stock price should fall. So what did early exercise accomplish? It accomplishes nothing to your advantage. By exercising the call, you lost the time value of the call. Second, you paid for the stock earlier than necessary, and that means you lost out on some interest that could have been earned on that cash. Finally, you increased the downside risk. Remember, you can always elect to exercise the call option at expiration and take delivery of the stock for the same fixed price. So why exercise it early? If the stock price plummets, you'll be glad you waited. We just found that it is never to your advantage to exercise a call option early if the stock pays no dividends. What can we say about those times when a stock is about to pay a dividend? If the stock is about to pay a dividend, it might pay to exercise early. But even for these cases, you should still wait as long as possible and exercise the day before the dividend is paid. In order to determine if it is advantageous to exercise a call early to collect a dividend, you must make equal risk comparisons. When you exercise the call and take delivery of the stock, we found that your profit and loss diagram looks like this straight line. However, in order to keep the risk profile the same as the long call, you would need to purchase a put option of the same strike. 
and that would flatten out this lower portion of the curve. Therefore, if you wish to exercise a call to collect a dividend, you should only do so if the dividend is greater than the cost to acquire it. Remember, when you exercise a call early, you will lose the time value of the call, you will lose interest by paying for the stock early, and you'll have to pay a time value for the put in order to keep your risk profile the same. So for example, if you exercise a call that has 50 cents worth of time value, and you will lose, let's say, $30 worth of interest by paying for the stock early, and you'd have to pay 20 cents for the put, then that has a total value of 50 plus 30 plus 20 equals $100. If the dividend is less than $100, it does not pay to exercise the call early. If the dividend is greater than $100, it may pay to exercise early keeping in mind that you'd have to account for commissions and possible exercise fees. While it may be advantageous to exercise a call option early, is it ever advantageous to exercise a put early? The answer is yes, and the reason is that when you exercise a put, you are selling the risky stock and receiving the safe cash. Exactly the opposite set of transactions for exercising a call. For example, assume this is our timeline and that today the stock is 105. You purchase 100 shares plus a six-month $100 put. Three months later, the stock is trading for $80, and you believe it will not rise above the $100 strike before expiration. If you feel that it will stay below $100, you have two choices here. First, you can wait until expiration, exercise it, and collect your $100 strike at that time. However, you could also elect to exercise it early and collect your $100 today which will earn interest for three months. If the interest is greater than the put's time value, it may make sense to exercise the put early. Exercising put options early may make financial sense, but only for those times when the stock's price is sufficiently below the strike price. As you get more advanced with options, you'll also find there are synthetic alternatives to consider. For example, instead of exercising a call, you can keep your call and just sell a put. That creates a position that behaves just like long stock, something called a synthetic long stock position. However, in this case, if the value of the put is greater than the dividend, you'll be better off by selling the put rather than collecting the dividend. Likewise, instead of exercising your put, you can just hang on to the put but sell a call instead, thus letting the call proceeds act as your interest. This creates a position called a conversion which is guaranteed to grow to a greater amount of money just as if you had sold your shares and earned interest on the money. But in this case, if the call's proceeds are greater than the interest you could have earned, you would be better off by selling the call. Now that you understand about exercising options, let's see just how easy it is in Thinkorswim. To submit exercise in Thinkorswim, you'll start with the Monitor tab here in the upper left corner and that just shows all current positions in your account under the position statement. Right here we have a position in CVX, Chevron Texco, left mouse click the blue arrow, shows the breakdown of stock and options, and right here we've got some October 75 calls. If I want to exercise these, I right mouse click anywhere on that line, down below in the pop-up menu is the word exercise. Left mouse click there, brings you right over to the trade tab, says that we are exercising five contracts and in exchange we'll be purchasing 500 shares of stock. If that's the order the way you want it, click on confirm and send. Up pops the order confirmation dialog box giving you one last look at your order telling us that we are exercising five contracts here of the October 75 calls. Be aware that this is an irrevocable transaction. Watch just how fast it fills and think or swim. And there we go. We have exercised our contracts, and we are now long 500 shares of CVX. So exercising options is just that fast and easy in Thinkorswim. If you are interested in advanced training on Thinkorswim, please visit www.optionsatoz.com. I have a five-week Thinkorswim training class where I'll show you how to use the system and, more importantly, how to interpret the numbers and why you would select one process over another. Videos are emailed to you immediately following each class. You'll also receive free video updates whenever Thinkorswim makes changes to the system.
If you're interested in additional options education, please visit iTunes.com and search for our free podcast, Options A to Z Live. I hope you've enjoyed the video and now understand how to submit exercise instructions in Thinkorswim.